Okay, so I have been using the Omnipod in full closed loop for about a week now, and I gotta say, this is by far my favorite insulin pump system that I've ever used. And honestly, that's probably saying a lot because I've used every FDA approved uh, automated insulin delivery system, like the Minimed 670G, uh, the Tandem T Slim X2. Uh, I use them all, and I've used some non FDA approved ones, such as the Minimed 780G, which, crazy enough, still is not FDA approved in the US. And you also might be saying, Jake, how are you using the Omnipod 5? You know, yes, it's FDA approved, but it is not widely available. Um, I'm not using the Omnipod 5, I am using the Omnipod Dash, but in a full clues loop through Android APS. And full disclaimer here this is not medical device. I am not a doctor and I am certainly not your doctor. If you're going to do anything that's going to influence your management of your diabetes, please discuss it with your doctor. The Android APS system is not all this is also not FDA approved. But with that out of the way, this is so exciting. Unless So what is Android APS? Well Android it's it's the platform that it was designed for, you know, Android that runs on smartphones and tablets. And then APS is artificial pancreas system. Um, if you've heard of looping for the iPhone, this is the Android version of that. And if you haven't heard of looping, what it is is it basically it uses your smartphone as brains and it interprets the data from your, your CGM, whether that's Dexcom or like a Libre with an adapter, and it interprets that data and then it communicates that with your pump. And so even if your pump isn't designed to be in a closed loop, then it will be the brains and make it run in a closed loop. These systems, Loop, Android APS, Open APS, none of these are new and they've, they've actually existed for a lot longer than the FDA approved systems like the 670G. But what's new and exciting is how it runs with the Omnipod Dash and that's what I'm excited to share with you today. So first of all, using the Omnipod Dash with any sort of automated loop is only supported with Android APS. It's not supported on the iPhone loop or open APS. And I'm not entirely sure why that is. Part of me thinks that it has something to do with the PDM is running Android and they were able to take that code or the device just communicates better. Um, I don't know, but at the same time, Bluetooth is also Bluetooth. So I don't know, maybe just the iPhone loop hasn't been able to figure it out yet. But as of right now, it is only for Android. Now, if you are using an iPhone, don't let that be too much of a deterrent if you are interested in this, because the reality is Android has such a wide variety of devices and you need to get something on the super low end because you're just running this one application. So maybe you can get like a four year old used Android phone that's not software supported for like 40 or 50 bucks off of Facebook Marketplace. Also, for what it's worth, the, the PDM is also a full-fledged Android device that's just got repurposed software on it. I think the bootloader is already unlocked. It may not be impossible to just flash normal Android and run that on that. I definitely would stay away from that unless you 100% know what you're doing. And you probably have another uh, backup insulin delivery system in case you, know, you do something that can't be reversed. But that is an option to think about. But... What makes Android APS so exciting on the Omnipod Dash is that for the first time, this isn't possible with any other uh, loopable pump, is that you don't need an external adapter. Now there are, there are a lot of loopable pumps and there's some older Medtronic pumps. There's the Omnipod Euro series. Um, they're all loopable, but they've all required a Riley Link. And a Riley Link is just a device that accepts the Bluetooth from your phone and then so the phone sends it via Bluetooth to the right link and then the right link and then is able to communicate with the pumps. I've always been super interested in looping and even had the Android APS app built and installed on my phone but what's prevented me from doing it in the past has always been that I needed the right link. I even had an old Medtronic pump that was capable of doing this. You know, the Riley Link's not super expensive, but it's not super cheap either. It's about 150 You can add stuff like wireless charging, get that price up. Um, but it's, it really, just the fact that it was another device that I needed to charge. It was a small device, so I was scared I was going to lose it. And it just, it seemed like another device that could possibly break and another device that could possibly have problems. 
And so it's really the Riley link that turned me off. So now with Android APS and Omnipod Dash, it just communicates directly with Bluetooth. There's no external device or anything. And here's just a quick video of, of me giving a bolus. You can see how well it works. So yeah, this is just my normal phone. It's not a PDM. Um, it's just running Android. Um, it's Oxygen OS 11 based on Android 11. Nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got the app. You, uh, if you want to give yourself some insulin, just boom. You know, handshake. And then you hear that little beep, and that's how... That's the pod saying, hey, yeah, Bulse was initiated, and then a Bulse was canceled. Um, you got a calculator, um, and then right here it is looping with the Dexcom, and you see it, it's kind of adjusted my base rate. Normally it would be one unit an hour. It's gone up just because I'm a little bit high right now, but yes, super cool. And so like I mentioned, this has been my favorite way that I've been able to manage my diabetes. And you know, every other insulin pump that I've used, Minimed 600G, 780G, uh, the, the Tandem T-Slim X2, every single one of them has had some like glaring problem. You know, with the, with the Medtronic pumps, there was the sensor. The sensor was just garbage for me. With the T-Slim, I loved the sensor. I loved the Dexcom. But then like the infusion sets were going bad. They were tunneling like crazy. Um, I felt like the algorithm wasn't working for me, and just with this, there, there isn't that glaring weakness. The pods are working well. I very, very rarely have any of them tunnel. Usually I get the full three days, and then I get an extra eight hours. All of them have worked great. Um, the sensor, I'm still using the Dexcom G6, which is my favorite sensor on the market. And just with the, the algorithm in the middle, it's you can fine-tune it exactly how you want and that's been amazing and just another example from my life of, of what's been great about this so the biggest challenge for me as a diabetic is exercise um, it doesn't matter whether I'm going on a run or if I'm playing basketball within the first 30 minutes of me starting I crash like a rock and it's I've kind of learned to mitigate it by you know my blood sugar's always got to be above 180 when I start and I got to have very little insulin on board uh, but I still just crash like crazy. And within a half hour of me being done exercising, I spike like crazy. And I'm talking, you know, 150, 200 points. So if I finish my exercise at 120, I am raising up to 270 to 320 within a half hour of me being done. Now that spike is obviously going to be on the higher end if I did need to take carbs to treat that hypo. But since I hate playing basketball, with my with my insulin pump on or going on a run with my insulin pump on you know I just it didn't ever feel secure and I didn't feel safe running with it on so I always took it off ever since I was diagnosed um, but now with the Omnipod I'm able to say and you know I, I generally know how long you know I'm gonna be play, playing basketball until 11 o'clock I want to be running for the next hour and a half whatever I'm able to say hey you know give yourself no insulin up until this time and then enact this basal rate after that. And so I'm able to kind of get a head start on that crazy spike and it's really helped mitigate it. And another thing that a lot of people might not realize about the Omnipod is that the brains of the pump are actually on the pod itself. You know, some people think that the PDM is what's controlling everything. It's, it's not. Um, the pump is running continuously by itself on the pod and then you just use the PDM to tell it to change the temporary basal. Uh, but what this means is, is that even like if my phone dies in the middle of my run or even if you know my phone is in my basketball bag outside of outside of bluetooth range it doesn't matter because that's programmed on the pod itself so next let's talk about battery life you know you, you'd think that running this application that's continuously running in the background collecting all this data and sending stuff to the pump would drain your battery and let me tell you about my experience with that and keep in mind that your mileage will vary, but for my from my experience, it, it actually hasn't been that big of a drain. And just to give you some context, I use my phone so different than probably anyone else on the planet. And what I mean by that is that my phone is constantly, constantly just running things in the background, but I'm not really using my phone that self all that much, right? So 
on my way to and from work, it's running wireless Android Auto. My phone stays in my pocket when I'm at work. Uh, I'm using Google Messages, so I'm texting through my computer. Um, it's not unrealistic by the time I get home from work that my phone has a half hour screen on time, but it's just constantly been running stuff in the background. So because I've been using all that background to begin with, maybe that's why I haven't taken as big of a hit as far as battery life. But if you're someone who's constantly on their phone and has a ton of screen on time, then you know adding this background on top of that, that, that very well could have a big impact on, impact on your battery. This obviously can be mitigated pretty good by because most Android phones, at least most flagship Android phones, have some form of, of fast charging on there, right? So my phone is a OnePlus 8, it has 30 watts charging. It's, it's, it, even if my phone is almost dead by the time I get home, you know, I can top it off 10, 15 minutes and I'm good to go for the rest of the night, right? My wife has a OnePlus 8T, she has 65 watt charging. The OnePlus 10 has 80 watt charging. You know, the newer Samsung phones have 45 watt charging. So just keep that in mind that, hey, you know, even if it is a big drain on battery, if you have a newer flagship phone, you can just do a quick top off when you have 10, 15 minutes and, and you should be good to go. And so if this is something that you're interested in doing, just, you know, no way it is a process, right? And so you have to build the app yourself, which isn't really as scary as you sound. You, you run Android Studio, you download some code, some code, you, you generate the APK and you send that to your phone. It's really, that, that's not nearly as scary as it sounds, but know that there are certain objectives that you have to hit. And basically the, the further you get in the objectives, the more looping that the system does. So you start out just manually doing everything, manually setting the temp basils that it recommends. Right? And then it slowly starts closing the loop. But man, during those early stages, it, it amazed me how much I had relied on looping. You know, I had been looping either on the 670G, 780G, the T-Slim X2. I had been looping for a while and it amazed me at how much I relied on it. And the big reason why is because I don't have a consistent diet. You know, I am eating clean and, and trying to be healthy most of the time, but there are times when I, you know, have a weekend where I just go crazy and eat whatever I want. And during those times, my blood sugar just varies like crazy. And that wasn't the case when I was looping. Um, but now that I'm in a completely closed loop, um, everything's good and I, I'm just, I'm loving it. It's great. So now that I'm running a full closed loop with the Omnipod Dash, you might think, is there even a point to Omnipod 5? And yes, there is actually, because one of the biggest advantages that the Omnipod 5 has over Android APS with the Omnipod Dash is that the, the algorithm itself is going to be running on the pod, right? So it's communicating directly with the Dexcom. And that means that a, it's going to help the battery on your phone, right? So your phone isn't constantly needing to connect with the pump to, to you know, say, hey, up the basal rate because his blood sugar is raising a little bit. Um, that's all going to be done on the pot itself. And also, if your phone's dead, you're still going to be getting those correction basals. Also, with the Omnipod 5, it's going to be, I feel like, a lot more user-friendly. I mean, the Android APS app is incredible, and there's tons of data in there and stuff, but it's just... It's not very like graphically, I guess, well designed. It doesn't look pretty for lack of a better word. And I feel like the Omnipod app will. Um, also, you won't need to build the APK and do all this kind of loophole stuff to, to get it to work. It, it will be FDA approved and that's a game changer. And also it will just be an app that you can just download from the Google Play Store and eventually the iPhone App Store. But also on the flip side, because it's going to be kind of FDA approved and kind of just for like the general consumer, I do feel like it will have to be nerfed a little bit. So, I mean, here's an example, right? Um, say my blood sugar is 200 and my target is 110 and I have a cor correction ratio of um, 30 to one, which means one unit of insulin is going to bring my blood sugar down 30. Um, that means that my pump can give me that full three units. Whereas I feel like with that getting the FDA happy, that's gonna need to only give you like 75% of the, of the actual insulin that you need. And that, that's kind of what the tandem 
needed to do. Another big advantage there is, you know, the Omnipod 5 is programmed to work with the G6, right? What happens when the G7 comes out? Is it going to be a whole new thing where they need to run through trials and, and make sure that the system works? Whereas, you know, with looping, it doesn't matter what your input source is, right? That being said, I am still super excited for the Omnipod 5 and I will be upgrading and I will probably be doing a heads to heads comparison and, and comparing what works well on each system. So if that's at all interesting to you, make sure that you're subscribed. If you have any questions, please put those down below. Any suggestions for future videos, also put that down below. And we'll see you in the next one.